Hey you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I sincerely hope you are well wherever you are in the world. And today I'm going to be taking you through kind of like a foundation routine. How I color correct, how I highlight, how I contour and all that nice jazz. So yeah, let's get to it. The first step before you do your foundation should be color correcting. And over here I've got three color correctors with me. This is the orange color corrector, the yellow color corrector and the green color corrector. All of them are from LA Girls and I actually stock these correctors and concealers. So if you're interested in some, you can just DM me. And uh, what these are meant for, okay. You see like in preschool when we were learning about the color wheel, uh, you were being told how if you mix this color and this color, you'll be able to get this color. So that is the same principle used behind color correcting. So the orange color corrector is used for correcting dark spots. So if you have like uh, some discoloration due to acne scarring or you have like the dark circles under your eyes, most people also have discoloration around their mouth. That is what you use this for, for correcting dark spots. The green color corrector is used for correcting redness and some people usually like redness, who gets red? Well, you see like really light skinned people, sometimes when they get like an imperfection, it will become red. Like... Uh, or when they're in the sun for too long, they get red. So this is what you use to correct uh, the redness. Next is the yellow corrector. And with the yellow corrector, it's essentially meant for brightening the under eye. But sometimes uh, I find a client who is really light. So I'll mix, I will mix this two to get like a peach color so that it can blend better with the skin tone. So with your orange corrector, you need to apply it only where it's needed. You don't need to put this all over your face. Or if you're putting it under the eye, you don't need to go like this, like how you highlight. You only put it where it's needed. So like now for the under eye, uh, I'll only put it here, very close to the eye, and then I can blend it in. I won't go like this as if I'm putting a highlight. No, you just put it to where it's needed, and then you blend it in. So the reason that I insist that you'll only put this concealer where you need it is for blending purposes. You see like now I don't look orange, I don't look way too orange. Like if I went outside someone would be like, wait, you have so much orange on your face. I didn't need to put another concealer on top of the corrector to cover it a bit. I just put it where the dark circles were and it cancelled out the dark effect. Also, if you put too much of it, it will show under your foundation, especially if you used foundation that doesn't have too much coverage it will show like you'll put on your foundation and then you look orange underneath it so you'll just it will throw off your foundation color and it will look like you picked the wrong shade for your face so when you're done with color correcting now we move on to foundation and there are various different tools that you can use to apply your foundation you can use a, a triangular wedge and these are actually very affordable, like a pack of this, a huge pack can be like only $3 on AliExpress. And uh, can use a beauty blender. This is actually my favorite thing to use to apply foundation. And when you're using your beauty blender, you have to make sure that it's damp, not wet, damp. So you can run it under the sink, then squeeze off all the excess water and then use it on your face. It'll just blend way better than if you use it dry. The next thing that you can use are brushes and here i have three foundation brushes this is the normal foundation brush that i'm sure everyone is familiar with the problem with using such a foundation brush is it it leaves streaks like because of how it's made sometimes it will leave lines on your face like how you've applied like you know how you paint and then it leaves those lines that's what this does sometimes the next brush i have is a flat top kabuki brush and uh, this brush is very good to use to people who have a lot of imperfections because what this does, you don't want to rub when you're using this brush and use a stippling motion. And when you do this, you're pressing the product into your face and that way uh, it, it's able to like give more coverage compared to a brush like this one. So if, remember, if you have a lot of imperfections, invest in a flat top brush. Next, I have a a round top brush 
and this brush it's pink because i like to use it for blush i just like i like how it applies blush but you can also use this to apply your foundation today i'm going to use the black opal foundation in truly topaz and i'm just going to dab this all over my face and the problem with black opal is it transfers a lot like you, you can hug someone and your face remains on their shirt that's the only problem I have with black opal but if you set it well the transfer is reduced so I'm going to use this brush mostly because I'm sure very many people will have this foundation but so I'm going to use this on my face today So what I'm going to do is take my beauty blender and this spray bottle that has rose water in it. It has rose water but you can use normal tap water, there is no difference really. I just want to use this because the spray bottle will make it much easier. So I'm going to spray this on my beauty blender to make it damp. And after it's damp, I'm going to go over my face and blend everything together and what this will do it will remove all the excess foundation that my face does not need also it will cancel out all the streaks that uh, this foundation brush will have left on my face so you see all that excess that is foundation that my face didn't necessarily need but it was on there after foundation we're going to move on to highlighting and with highlighting what I can tell you is that the shade of the highlight that you're going to apply on your face depends on how you're going to set it. For example if you're going to use your normal face powder to set your highlight you want to go about two shades brighter than your skin tone. And this is why you see like your face powder is, is like your skin tone. So uh, when you apply your highlight and then you put this face powder on top, it's going to make it darker. So that is why you want to go around two shades lighter than your skin tone so that after you have put on your powder, uh, you get the highlight color that you want. Another way you can set your highlight is using a, a really light powder to bake your face. Mostly we use our translucent powders for this. And with translucent powders, your highlight will become much lighter when you're done uh, when you're done setting your face especially if you're going to bake this and you like to bake for really long hours hours minutes <laughs> and you'll bake for really long minutes uh, your highlight will become much lighter than how you initially put it so with this i'd advise you to go literally just the next color after your foundation that's the highlight you want to use because after you set it and then you sit with it for a while for it to bake and get in there it's going to become lighter after you sweep off all the excess so today for highlighting i'm going to use heavenly honey also from black opal and i'm using this color because it is just like literally the next color after my skin tone and this is because i'm going to bake afterwards so i'm doing this because after i bake it will become much lighter so i don't want it to become like a crazy highlight when you're applying your highlight it's the opposite of how you color correct you see how with color correct we go exactly like into the crease of the eye you don't want to do that when you're highlighting you want to go like a centimeter below your eye and that is where we'll start putting the highlight and this is because if we put if we start putting it from all the way up here when you go through your daily activities it's going to start creasing and the reason that it's going to start creasing is because we applied so much product right there when we didn't need it so when we're applying this we're going to go like from around here and you just want to make that v-shape yeah and then when we're blending we'll blend it upwards towards the eye um when you're highlighting highlighting is meant to bring out uh, features on your face so you highlight the highest points of your face which is uh, under your eye the bridge of your nose your forehead your chin and your cupid's bow so you highlight the points that you want to bring out
another place that you can place your highlight is over here like you see naturally your contour will go somewhere like here see that that is where your contour is supposed to go so you want to highlight below the contour and if you can't find a contour that's uh, your shade you can also do this and you look as if you have contoured and this is called reverse contouring so you apply a highlight just below where you will apply your contour color and it will look as if you have contoured and then now we blend it in So now that we are done with our blending, we're going to set and I'm only going to set the areas where I highlighted. And I'm going to leave this place right here and I'll tell you why in a bit. This sets onto my face, I'm going to contour. But if you do not want to pick, you can just go ahead and sweep this off because it will have already set your highlight. So now I'm going to contour and I'm going to use black opal in sweet mocha. So with highlighting, we were bringing out certain uh, points of our face. With contouring, we push them back. We kind of hide them and draw less attention to them. Highlighting, you want people's eyes to land there, 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 bam, bam, bam. So yeah, with contouring, it's for receding the points. And there's no like huge science to contouring according to the shades. Just find a dark enough color that suits your skin tone and uh, the points that we contour are here below our cheekbones and you also want to apply it here on your nose and also on your forehead so on your forehead this is how it goes if you have a very big five head like mine you'll apply your contour all the way around like this but if you have no forehead you don't want to do this because you'll reduce the no forehead that you already don't have you want to apply your contour on this point like you'll only apply it here and here another place that you might want to contour is over here on your neck not down here but just below here and you want uh, and people do this so that you can make yourself look a bit skinnier so if you feel like you have a fat neck down here just apply the contour and it will shed off a few extra pounds. And for the purpose of this video, I'll show you down here. That's it. Now all that's left to do is blending. So if you remember this place over here that we didn't set. So that is what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to do it after my contour so that I can clean up the contour and make that line look really crisp. This point is where I do all the cleaning up. So I'll go back to places like here. Now comes the fun part, we're going to sweep off all the powder and for this I'm using this tiny brush over here and this is essentially meant for foundation, you can see it's a flat top brush, it's a smaller version of the other one that I showed you but it's too, it's not like stiff enough for foundation so if I was to use this it wouldn't work well for stippling so that's why I just use it to do my powder. And when you're sweeping off your powder, you want to be very gentle and careful not to move any of the product that we have already worked so hard in setting. So just be gentle and use swiping motions. So as you can see, we look white. Actually a bit too white for my liking. And today I'm looking more white than normal because of all the setting that I did while I was explaining. So that's a point to note. If you bake for way too long, you'll become ashy and white. 
so that we don't end up on an Instagram meme, this is how you can correct this. You go back in into your face powder. And this is just the normal face powder I use. This is Floma in number K102. So I'm going to take this powder and I'm going to use it to blend my entire face so that my contour and my highlight can all blend together. You can see now we look a bit more human and less like Casper. And to tie the whole look together, I'm going to go in with my blush. You can see I went a bit ham with my blush today so that I can show you how to correct it. So if you find that you've put on too much blush, you just go back into your face powder and then you go on top of it. And I've just realized that I forgot to mention, you don't always have to contour with a foundation. You can also use a powder. Like LA Girls have this uh, contour kit. It has about eight colors and they're all powders. And the medium to dark ones are that I find women of color can get more use out of. So you just use this and the same points that we contoured, you just go over it with a powder. And a powder will give you a much more natural contour. Now we're going to move on to a different kind of highlighting main two colors that this comes in is something like this and this gives you a sort of sun-kissed look and this other one is sort of whitish and it looks like that that is the color this will give you this is actually what i'm going to use today and this is called a fan brush the only difference is that mine is meant for painting like i went to textbook center the area for painting and I picked this up and at the time I didn't pick it up to use it for makeup I actually used, wanted to use it for my nail art stuff but I ended up using it for highlighting my face so I'm going to go into this highlight here they actually call it a baked bronzer I'm going to go into it dab off the excess and then so you want to use it just to bring out your cheekbones you also want to take it down the, your nose, down the bridge of your nose like that, end up here on the point, and then you go with it on your cupid's bow. And on your chin. You can go with it on your forehead as well, but I don't like doing this because when I take pictures, it just looks way too shiny. So that's it for this week's video and is this foundation routine meant for every day? No, it necessarily isn't. I actually rarely do this on myself. I like to save my makeup for special occasions only. But if it gives you self-confidence, then go ahead. By all means, do it every single day. Don't let anyone tell you what to do with the makeup that you buy with your own coins. So thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Until next time, bye.